Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I wanna talk about Facebook server-side tracking and why, especially in 2021, this might be something that you need in order to run your Facebook ads. So Facebook server-side tracking, the big reason a lot of people are talking about this is because of updates like the iOS 14 update that caused many people's tracking for Facebook and other ad platforms not to work. And in general, the move towards browsers blocking tracking pixels from being able to work and fire all those standard ads tracking events that so many advertisers rely on. So now, server-side tracking has become a huge issue. And if you're looking to get into server-side tracking for Facebook or Google Ads or any other platform, you're really gonna enjoy this video. So my goal in this video is just to give you an overview of briefly why people are using server-side tracking, what it is, what your options are for installing server-side tracking, and some of the pros and cons for each of those. At the end of this video, I'm gonna wrap up, and if you guys like this, if there's a specific platform you want me to get into, I'll go in and do a screen share or some sort of walkthrough where I take you through how to set up that platform. So without further ado, let's get into this overview of server-side tracking and some of the options that you can use right now in April, 2021. So. Again, server-side tracking, why are people interested in it? Well, updates like iOS 14 and other updates to browsers that are blocking pixels that traditionally have been used to fire events on the client side and send those events to ads platforms like Facebook ads or Google ads, any other ads platform to be able to track what users are doing on a site these types of events are slowly being phased out by all different types of web technologies that are now installing more strict versions of browser blockers that are not allowing these events to be fired and sent to these platforms. So many advertisers have taken it upon themselves to switch to what's called server-side tracking, where these events are sent via requests to the browser outside of what's going on on the client side or the front end, meaning what the users are viewing and the actions they're actually taking on that side of the site that they're viewing. Instead, these events are being sent to your server or a server that you own and then sent out to all the different platforms that you're gonna be collecting these events on. So if you think of all the platforms you wanna send those events to, it would be again, things like Google Analytics, uh, Google Ads, Facebook Ads, all these different platforms. In order to be able to do this, you have to have your own container to be able to send these events to, which is usually a separate computer running in the cloud or a server that you're then sending those events from that server out to all these different platforms. Now, if you couldn't tell by that description, this is a little bit more complicated than what most advertisers are used to, where you can just send events from the browser to a pixel that fires or from a pixel that fires on the page with that data being sent directly to the platforms. That cannot happen in many cases nowadays, so people are scrambling to figure out this other option, this server-side tracking option I just mentioned. Now, there are a bunch of different options on how to do this, but there's one main consideration. The main consideration is that while many software platforms like course platforms, content management systems, etc., have integrated tracking for this normal client-side tracking, there are very few platforms that already have integrated server-side tracking. Now, of the few that do, Shopify being an example of a leading platform that already has a server-side tracking integration, not many of the platforms that do have this integration have it for all the events that advertisers are used to. So if you think of a normal e-commerce funnel where someone will have their normal page view events, products page view events, or content view events for things like collections pages, initiate checkout, add to cart, and a purchase event, advertisers that switch to server-side tracking often have to cut that down drastically. In many cases, like the Shopify native integration for server-side tracking, there's only support for the conversion event, meaning that one event all the way at the bottom of the funnel. Now, while a conversion event is arguably the most important, you're setting in important event parameters like the price and the type of currency that's being paid, it's still important to have all those intermediary events. It's especially important if you have a full ads funnel that's optimized at each phase of that customer journey and uses those events for the optimization point in the platform. As many of you guys know, these ads platforms use that event data to optimize and they have powerful machine learning algorithms behind the scenes that are doing that work to optimize around these events. So us as advertisers, if we're losing access to these events, we're losing access to the majority of power we have to send data that these platforms can optimize on. So what are you gonna do if you 
don't have that as an option. Well, again, I mentioned native integrations like Shopify's integration that allow you to get the purchase event. But if you want to have all these other events, that's another story. Now there's other options besides just these integrated platforms. Another great option that I've been using recently, right now is around April of 2021, is Hyros. Hyros is a system that allows you to track ads much farther back than the out of the box tracking on a lot of these ad platforms, but it also allows you to do a version of server side tracking that you can replace many of the custom systems you'd have to install if you're trying to switch from that client side tracking to server side tracking. Now, just like I mentioned with the Shopify native integration, a problem that Hyros has is that it only allows you to have that purchase event sent via the server side tracking. If you wanna have all those different events right now, there's not a very good solution outside of doing your own custom setup. So what can you do if you wanna do your own custom setup and you wanna get all those normal events sent to your platform using this server side track. Right now, probably the best option is what's known as Google server side containers. Now this is just Google's suite of products. It's their version of a server side tracking solution. And all this is, is it allows you to send normal events from the browser that you would generally send straight to these platforms. It allows you to send those, translate them to your server, and then from your server, send those out to the different platforms that you're tracking on. Now, what's the difference? Uh, you might be asking, how does this work? How could this possibly help me? What it does is it allows you to circumvent many of those browser blockers that are preventing you from sending your normal pixel-based tracking. The problem with this is it is a very involved setup for someone that's used to just being able to put a pixel on a page. Going from that to setting up a server-side uh, tracking setup where you have to requisition your own server, which basically means you have to run your own cloud computer that you're sending these events to, and you have to make sure you have it on a custom domain. There's just many other considerations that go into doing a properly set up server side uh, tracking implementation. So if you guys are interested in learning about that implementation, that Google server side tracking setup being the one that I would recommend right now using Google Tag Manager server side containers, I can get into that in a separate video. I do have other videos where I talk about the solution using Hyros and in the near future, I'm gonna come out with a video detailing how the native solution for Shopify works and some good alternatives if you are on the Shopify platform. But for now, that is kind of the lay of the land for your options as far as server-side tracking goes. If this is your first time hearing about it, I would suggest checking out more of those two options, either looking at integrated solutions, the platforms like Shopify have, especially if you're a Facebook advertiser and are trying to use their conversion API. If you're not, you're on another platform that you don't think has any support, I would check out Hyros and look at their version of server-side tracking where they use events, or uh, offline event set uploads as part of their platform. And then if you're more advanced and you're used to using Google Tag Manager for normal web events, I would go ahead and check out what you need to get started setting up a Google Tag Manager server-side container and what you need to use Facebook's uh, conversion API integration and send events from that container to that integration. That's probably where I get started, but I just wanted to give you guys an overview of what I'm thinking about as an advertiser at this time in 2021. Now that we have all these changes happening to the normal way that we're tracking, if you guys have any of those setups you want detailed in a further video, make sure to leave that in the comments below. If there's anything that I got into in this video that you want me to go more in depth on, also let me know in the comments below. And if you like this in general, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you're notified anytime that I come out with a video just like this. All right, I think that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching.